Hi. It's Michelle Tennant Nicholson. We're in week three of the challenge. And I've got, um, this week we're having to watch Fast Food Nation. And I thought I would do my farmer's market um, food section on fast food. Let's see, farmer's market fast or fast, fast food farm, farmer's market fast. Um, how can you actually do farmer's market food fast so that it's actually faster than fast food? You get the idea. Anyway, so what I've got here is uh, some ideas on what we got in our CSA this week, our Community Supported Agriculture. I'm going to tell you how we're making them. Also, I'm on my lunch break, so we're going to do this in about um, 10 to 12 minutes. The added challenge for me is this weekend is my husband's birthday, so I have a few of his favorites here too to share with you so that I can show you how I do this fast, how I, you know, basically get the food ready for my in-laws to come this weekend and um, just fit fresh, organic preparation of food inside a busy schedule. I hope this helps. Get, uh, let me know what you think. Subscribe to my channel and tell me what else you want to see so that I know. First thing, I have a 20 year old cat, she's getting really finicky, and so I keep chicken on hand, um, some shredded chicken, all the time. And I, all I do is I go to the back of the grocery store and I get the organic natural chicken in the, I stop buying the frozen stuff. It just is um, full of antibiotics and steroids and it, I'm sure it affects my animals just like it does me. She won't eat her kibble anymore, so I keep um, this chicken, I just get like six breasts just plain, organic, skinless, boneless breast without antibiotics, and then I put it in a pressure cooker. This is very old school, but really great. I'm going to show you. I just did this this morning after my spin class. So I'm opening it up. You know, pressure cooker has a rubber um, around it, and it's basically got meat inside. This on the top. And you'll see that I've got chicken breast in here. And all I've done is I put water in the bottom, I put my six breasts, and then I actually have some organic chicken seasoning that I just sprinkle on top and then I cook that. Once the pressure, cook, pressure cooker starts to pressurize, you know, you'll hear it rocking, then I just cook it for about 10 minutes. If you are using a frozen variety, then just add another five minutes. Then what I do is I shred it and I actually keep it in. This is a BPA free plastic container. Most everything now is in mason jars that I, because I stopped using the BPA plastic, because this is BPA free. I put the chicken in the broth in here, and then I give it to her. And then for lunches, for me, I sometimes use some of the shredded chicken for uh, a little bit of barbecue sauce on it and some whole grain bread, and then I've got a quick barbecue sandwich. It's been really a lifesaver. So I just, that's, and also kids would love that, barbecue chicken sandwiches anytime. So that's just a quick idea. And that's 10 minutes. So what else? We also got this week um, apples in our from our farmer's market um, supplier. I would love to eat them just straight, but my husband said, why don't you do what you did with the apples last time? And well, what that is, is I do crock pot baked apples. I just had some old apples that were kind of mushy. I like them crisp, so I don't like them mushy at all. And so let me just go through that recipe really quick with you because he loves them and he wants them um, this weekend for like Sunday breakfast. And we, I like to put them on oatmeal or rice farina. I've really gotten into rice farina. He's a southern guy, so he likes them on grits or oatmeal and that kind of thing. Um, here's how you make it. You peel the apple completely and then you core it. And then so you've got a peeled apple that's cored you stick it in your crock pot, okay? And that lines the bottom of your crock pot. Then you add um, a half a cup of water and a half a cup of sugar. Now, I don't use sugar. I, I either use stevia, sometimes that gives an aftertaste if you don't like it. I recommend, and you can see how much I use my xylitol, I usually cook with xylitol. It's a little more expensive, but it's completely natural. It's actually good for your teeth. And it measures like sugar and tastes like sugar. The family just, they can't even tell that you don't have sugar in there. And it's really good on the uh, blood sugar. So half a cup of your sweetener, half a cup of water. Then raisins, 
just about two tablespoons of raisins that you stick inside the apple with a little bit of butter. You know, so inside each apple you stuff it with raisins, a little bit of butter, or you know, your smart balance health right. Um, you can add a little crystallized ginger and cinnamon. And I mix that up in a bowl first and then I stuff the apple with that. You put your lid on and you cook it overnight on low. And in the morning you have this amazing apple. Um, it almost tastes like uh, apple, uh, like the, um, the bread pudding that you get at Italian restaurants, but it's just apples. It's amazing. So he requested that, so I'm doing that. So that's another thing that you can do. Let me get this out of the way. Now, what else? The other thing that for him that he's really excited about is this. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this, but this is um, roast. Okay, he's a big meat eater. I we got it at our CSA. We're getting meat now, so I'm having to really discover how to eat the meat. My friend. Um, who created Yum Yum Dishes, you know I'm just like a huge fan of these Yum Yum Dishes. Tracy's her name, she used to own a restaurant she told me the fastest way to do a roast is you get a crock pot, also old school but really fast, so you get this crock pot, and I have a smaller one, um, but there are they're larger ones if you have a big family, and then you take a roast and then you just add bouillon cubes to it. I kid you not, that's it. Three or four bouillon cubes with a little bit of water. I'm going to cut this guy up, okay? I'm just going to cut him in half so that he cooks. And then you would just cook that. She said, and we've been cooking this recipe for months now. I mean, it's just delicious. Um, it's the first time we'll be using it with the organic meat, though. I'm excited. And what I'm going to do is probably, you could do like four to five hours on high or eight hours on low. So I'm just going to put the meat right in there, okay? And then you're going to put your your bouillon, and uh, remember, the one that has that I that has no MSG in it is better than, than bouillon. I'm in love with this stuff, but I have a few of the old stuff. Just I don't want to waste anything. I know I <laughs> I'm just not a waster, so I want to use up uh, the bouillon that I have on this, and then I'm gonna keep using this. And then what I do is um, if you've got some carrots, this is all extra though. All you really do is you just put the the water and the bouillon in there and then cook it. And that's all you need and you'll be surprised at how tasty it is. Just, you know, put it with some um, microwave potato, you got dinner. Kids love it. My nephews go crazy over this. So I'm just going to add a few organic carrots to that. And then I'm going to add, actually, I, I read somewhere that red wine is great on a roast, so I'm going to try that to see, hopefully, um, it's going to make this nice uh, broth, more rich, and then I'm just going to, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing with my, uh, with my onion here, let's see. I'm just cutting it in eight. And here's an organic onion, and I'm just going to put that on the top, okay, and then my half a cup of water, and I'm using a Brita water filter to make sure that I'm also cooking with water that's filtered. Okay, and then that's done. <laughs> that's dinner for tonight. And I'm probably gonna have some um, whole wheat. Let's see, what do I have in here? I like this brand because it's, it's really nice. Alexia, and then you just put their rolls in the oven for 10 15 minutes and the ingredients are pretty good. I always read the ingredients and I like the ingredients of this brand. And that's dinner. Okay, so that's the crock pot. And then um, it's about it's lunch time now, so I'm going to cook that on high until dinner time and then it will be ready by the time my husband comes home. The other thing I wanted to share with you is that, you know, I just made the organic turkey like you all had seen it in an earlier video. We were making fun of it being sort of like medieval times. You know, there's such a big turkey like, oh my gosh. I'm also realizing that meat that's coming from the farm directly 
is a little more bloody than the stuff that you than the meat that you buy at the grocery. So I'm washing it and rinsing it and making sure that I'm staying very clean in the kitchen. I was surprised about that. And I guess it has probably more nutrients then too, right? Fresher. But yesterday I had the leftover turkey broth and I did the same way in the crock pot. I put the turkey legs in and then I think I put chicken bouillon with, and then I, but I like, I filled it full of water because I like a lot of broth after poultry so that you can use it for soup. And then I put it in mason jars and then I used masking tape on the top and then I just write today's date and what it is and then I'll put that in the refrigerator. If it's not used within two weeks, um, I usually throw it away or give, or I usually freeze it, but generally it's used. So that's just a tip so that you're not using so much plastic. I know I'm trying to really cut down on the use of plastics and aluminum and, and do more glass. I did that after reading Jillian Michaels' uh, Master Your Metabolism. Now, what am I doing for a birthday cake? You're going to love this. Uh, this was actually in a little magazine that I read. I think it was originally a Weight Watchers recipe, but I love this recipe. Check out how easy it is. Okay. So all you need, and my husband loves this, okay, and everybody who eats this goes, oh my gosh, did you just spend hours in the kitchen? And no, literally five minutes. So this is a chocolate graham cracker crust. I'm going to melt a little bit of peanut butter and put that on the bottom of this crust. Okay? That's it. Then you take um, frozen yogurt or low-fat vanilla ice cream. I like this brand because it's really smooth and creamy. It's Edie's Yogurt Blend, Vanilla Yogurt Blend. We love this. So I take the whole carton and I put it in a bowl and I soften it. This is the microwave to soften it. And then I add some of my organic decaf coffee uh, granules to it. Not too much. And I just fold it in there. And then I put that all in the graham cracker crust that has the peanut butter layer on it. And then I put the plastic piece on top of that and put it right in the freezer. So it's an ice cream pie. And the chocolate, the peanut butter, and the vanilla yogurt, it's amazing. And then if you don't like the coffee, just leave it out. Some people don't like it. I've had some people say, oh, you know, I don't know if that's really great. But anyway, I hope this has been helpful.